Here are some of the main things that I wish I knew in my first year of playing the clarinet. My name is Josh Gu, and I'm taking my years of experience learning, teaching, and performing, and sharing all of my best clarinet and music tips so you can get more out of your practice, and most importantly, have fun. You can learn more about all of my many resources at quickstartclarinet.com, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos. So just some quick background on this video. I had a fun idea to maybe give some of my top tips for different stages in the playing journey. So this is the first year. Uh, so if you want to see a second year and more of these, then definitely leave a like on the video and leave a comment letting me know if this was helpful and any other tips that you have for first year players. So getting into my actual tips and the things that I wish I knew now, I'm gonna start with some of the more sort of basic ones and lead up to the more substantial ones as we go. So my very first one is, I wish I knew that I could get a better clarinet case. This is really silly and really simple, but there were so many times that I opened my case upside down. I, I had one of those cases that's just a very simple black case. Pretty much both sides were identical other than like one little name plate and the latches were like really old and didn't hold very well. So in my first years with that first clarinet, I opened the case upside down several times and everything fell out. I would just be walking and carrying it and it would just open and spill out my clarinet down the hall and it was just a bad time. And a new case is pretty affordable. Even the similar basic case that had clearer markings and newer latches would have been worthwhile. So that's just a little one. If you're having issues like that, you can actually just get a better case for a pretty affordable price and stop dropping your clarinet everywhere and then having to pay for the repairs after you've dropped your clarinet. And along the same lines, I wish I would had stopped putting it bell down, just sitting on the floor, just standing on the bell without an actual stand. Again, I knocked it over so many times doing that and just hold the clarinet, it's not that hard. All right, next up on the equipment side of things still, is I wish I knew to swab the mouthpiece separate. When I was first playing, I would take my reed off, drop the swab through the bell, and it would hit my mouthpiece, and my very first mouthpiece actually has pretty visible dents and chips out of the sort of like baffle where the, the swab was going through and hitting it. I was also using a swab with metal sort of beads on it, um, like a chain that went through. I would also not recommend a swab with any metal on it anywhere. Uh, the weight should be fully covered in fabric so that you aren't having any metal going through the instrument. And you should take the mouthpiece off, swab that gently and separately so it's not having all of the force of those metal beads smashing into it and causing it to change. And my last equipment related tip that actually has a lot to do with actual playing is I wish I knew that reeds actually matter and that different reeds are different. Not a whole box of size two reeds are all the same or size two and a half. I knew the strengths were different, obviously, and I knew that there were different brands, but I wish I knew that you could get a box of Bandorans or Ricos or whatever beginner reeds you're on all the same strength, theoretically, and every single read in the box would be different. If I had known that, then maybe I would have been more inclined to rotate some reads and, and try different reads in the box and have a few reads in my case ready to go rather than just playing the one read until it died and then putting on a different read and thinking, why does this feel so unbelievably different than the read that I was playing on? Having that rotation early on, knowing that the reads actually matter and actually differ from read to read in the box would have been so helpful for staying a little bit more organized, probably developing my playing faster because I wouldn't be developing just to the one read and would have different reads going. So along with that also actually rotating reads and having a few reads going and maybe even breaking in reads. I don't know how necessary that is for a first year player, but breaking in reads is a really good idea so that they last longer, so that 
you have multiple reads going and have all of that input to play with rather than waiting until you play a read until it's so soft it breaks and then putting on a new read and thinking, oh my gosh, this read's terrible, it's so hard compared to what I was playing because you didn't realize that that two that you've been playing for a month and a half straight is now like a 1.25 strength. So when you put on a new two, it feels completely different, especially if that new two happens to be one of the ones in the box that's harder. So that's a big one I wish I knew was just that reads matter, all the reads in the box can be different, and maybe I should have a few reads going on too feel good about that. Now getting into the purely playing side of things, I wish I knew that the hands can be relaxed and natural holding the clarinet. It's so easy when you first pick up the clarinet, especially when you're a little younger. I started playing clarinet when I was 10 years old, and the clarinet was maybe a tiny bit big for my hands, but you think see it and you're like oh I gotta get my fingers on these holes and okay now I gotta do something crazy and you end up with like these really crunched up hands or really straight awkward hands and all these weird positions and all of that slows you down when you're trying to wiggle your fingers fast it creates extra tension it makes it uncomfortable to hold the instrument when in fact you can really just shake out your hands have a good relaxed natural position and bring that to the clarinet and Maybe when your hands are a little small, you have to do a little adjusting, but I think even pretty small hands, and definitely my size hands when I was 10 and starting, could have found a position where if, if I lined up the wrists right, uh, had the, the fingers approaching the instrument at the right angle and in the right way, I could have easily reached all of the keys without having to stretch or contort or do anything crazy with the hands to try to actually hit the keys and from that base relaxed position it would have been so much easier to cover the holes consistently which would eliminate squeaking find uh, crossing the break when we get there all of that stuff is so much easier when you have a default natural good hand position Next up, I wish I knew that you were supposed to put your top teeth on the mouthpiece. I think for my first four or five years of playing, I didn't even know that you were supposed to actually put the teeth on the mouthpiece and I was playing some form of, of double lip where my lip was actually over the teeth and it was a pretty awkward transition for me uh, my freshman year of high school when I switched from lip to teeth on so I wish way way earlier uh, than four or five years into playing that I had known that the top teeth actually go on the mouthpiece then the lips come down and around and seal and get all that good embouchure stuff going which we'll talk about a little bit more in the year two video uh, but for now first year if I had just known that the top teeth go on would have made things so much easier. And the last thing that I wish I knew as a player in that first year was that the tongue's actually supposed to touch the reed. This is another thing. I think it took about three years of playing before I started actually tonguing and actually putting my tongue on the reed. I was doing a kind of weird throat tonguing where I would stop the air sort of in my throat or maybe with the very, very back of the tongue closing off the throat and sort of tongue from there. and. It kind of worked and that's why I did it because I would hear articulation and I knew what articulation was supposed to sound like and that's the way that I made that sound on the instrument because nobody ever really told me that the tongue's supposed to touch the reed. Um, maybe they did and maybe I wasn't paying attention. Very possible at that early age in that first year of playing but I wish I knew that the reed's in your mouth, the tongue's there, tip of the tongue touches the tip of the reed and then comes off and you have the sound that you're playing when it's off you stop the vibrations of the reed while keeping the air flowing and the embouchure steady and then bring the tongue off and of course I have lots of videos on tonguing and articulation if that would be helpful to get more in depth with how that goes because again I really wish that I had had a good explanation of what my tongue should be doing and how tonguing actually works in that first year of playing so that's all of my tips for the first year. Of course, there's many, many, many more tips as we go through the years, but I think if you're in your first year of playing, these are good ones to be thinking about. 
sort of having top of mind. It's nothing too complicated. It's just a few little things that will set you off in the right direction. So if you enjoyed this, leave the video with a like, subscribe if you wanna see year two and year three and so on because I have some more of them planned and it'll be great to know if you're enjoying these so I can make more of them and, and continue to find these little fun tips along your clarinet playing journey. Leave a comment below with any other good tips you would have for first year players. These were sort of just a broad overview of a handful of things. I'm sure there's lots of other good ones in there. And again, maybe some of them I saved for future years because the first year doesn't need to be too crazy. It's just sort of finding the sound a little bit, getting some fundamentals started in the right spot, and then developing from there. But definitely let me know in the comments any other great tips that you have for first year players. Thanks so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in another one. And last but not least, a huge heartfelt thank you to the Dennerzins. This is like the Quick Start Clarinet family who supports the channel and helps to make everything that I do possible. If you would like to support the channel and get some awesome rewards in return where we can work one-on-one -on -one over video and you can have my full support moving forward on your clarinet journey, then go to quickstartclarinet.com supporter.